Hello everyone. So this is me, Shupanta Dei, a student of genetic engineering and biotechnology at the University of Dhaka. I have currently been in a research fellowship program in omics logic bioinformatics. Dr. Harpreet Kaur Madam has been my supervisor. So today I am going to show you the project we have been working on. The research question is how the third dose of malaria RTS ASO1 vaccine is associated with controlled inflammation and increased protection. For this, we did bioinformatic analysis on significant gene expression on various stages of the vaccination. Also, we established a relationship between the genes and connected them with various pathways they affect. In 2019, there are 229 million malaria cases and among them 409,000 deaths occurred. There is a continuous problem with malaria and only vaccine can help us if we think about the long-term solution. Africa is the worst sufferer from malaria. If you look at the figure at the right side, the dark green areas in Africa has faced 10 to 40 million malaria cases in 2015. Other regions, not much less either. And in the other figure, red regions indicate increase in malaria cases, green regions mean a decrease in the number of cases and yellow means somewhat both. So I guess you all understand why malaria vaccine must be very significant. Malaria vaccine development entered a new milestone in 2015 as RTSS became the very first human antiparasite vaccine to pass regulatory examination. That is our malaria vaccine. It has significantly showed that it can prevent malaria. Now you must be thinking about two things. One, how does this vaccine can protect us from malaria? And secondly, why are we mainly focusing on the third dose? I will answer them both. This vaccine facilitates several gene expression which is associated with protection. Also, it reduces the pathogenicity of malaria. This is how it helps in protection. And we analyzed first and second dose data sets too. But the main reason we are focusing on the third because it is the crucial one associated with gene expression changes. Also literature study pointed out third vaccination increases the protection status significantly. On top of that our study also focused on both regular third vaccination and a delayed fractional third vaccination. So it was a better approach to focus on how this dose affects gene expression mostly cytokine ones. Here we are going to talk about the method we followed. We divided genes into groups so that we can do differential gene expression, factor regression, and PC plot and H class for visualization purpose. We found out the genes which are significantly expressed. Then we found out the up and down regulated ones, which helped us to reach to a conclusion with our study with the help of literature. So let us uh, look at the data set and the groups. As you can see, the organism was Homo sapiens and RNA-seq analysis was done. Also the sample source was PBNC samples. If you look at the groups, you will see from pre-vaccination state to day of challenge or controlled human malaria infection day, there are total six groups and the number of samples is 275. We also analyze data sets of first and second dose and uh, we'll discuss them later on. This plot includes all the samples and what does it actually show us? It shows the variation in expression of sample groups. We understand from this plot that day 3 and day 1, as you can see day 3 and day 1, uh, they are together away from other groups, but not so much different from each other. Day 14 remains totally in a different cluster here. Most interestingly, day of challenge is not here, the day of challenge that is not far away than day of vaccination. Day of challenge and day of vaccination as you can see. One reason of that might be over expression or over cytokine expression is related to its negative impact or pathogenicity in case of malaria. So not a not an extreme response on the day of challenge that might be good. These figures will show you how the sample expression pattern of all the groups changes when we compare between one group to another group. This is necessary to understand several gene expression is associated with protection and various number of significant genes in different groups could tell us more about a correlation. Moving on, at this point we showed graphs and plots that help us in understanding variation in sample expression pattern. 
In this slide, however, you can find out 219 genes are significantly expressed. As you can see, 219 genes are significantly expressed while we compared between pre-vaccination and day of challenge samples in third dose. Here, you can see the Volcano plot for all the genes and here is a heat map for the top 50 up and down regulated genes. And now these figures clearly show you a distinction. The threshold was uh, FDR less than 0.005, p-value less than 0.05 as you can see it is mentioned here and log FC values uh, less than minus 1 or greater than plus 1. Now why is this uh, an important step for our analysis. Well, now that we found significant genes in defined samples, we can see how they are associated with defined pathways and protection in our body. Let us focus on the interpretation of what is showed till now and an analysis of the significant genes. Here we did various ontology and pathway analysis in NDJ. The most interesting findings from this was cytokine activity their receptor interaction and inflammatory responses in all of the pathways or biological molecular functions. Also, literature studies have found in Plasmodium falciparum malaria, insufficient oxygen reaching vital organs and excess release of pro-inflammatory cytokines might be associated with primary driving force of disease and death. Cytokine is associated with protection as well as imbalanced and overproduction can lead to pathogenicity. Malaria related anemia, less supply of oxygen to mitochondria also happens because of overexpression of cytokines. So, how the vaccine protects us from this double edged sword? We'll get to the answers. Cytokine genes are mostly down regulated, but as you can see here, the up regulated genes are mostly associated with regulation of calcium ion dependent exocytosis or voltage gated calcium channels. Now, moving on. We can see here the genes associated with cytokine and inflammation present in all three doses. Well, as you can see in the first dose, the expression is upregulated on the day of vaccination. In the second dose, it is both up and down regulated, as you can see, up regulation and down regulation. But in case of third regulation, the expression just falls. Here you can see it is mostly down regulated. This is applicable for all the cytokine related important or significant genes. Moving on, we will show you a heat map of the same. Here you can also see how the expression pattern varies from one group to another and this also shows you a clear distinction. Now, we saw down regulation of cytokine associated genes after the third dose. So, we feel the need for analyzing what happens after the first and second dose. That's what we showed you in the before slides. We found cytokine and inflammation genes are upregulated after the first, both up and down regulated after the second. What do you gather from this? Well, antibodies are produced against the antigen of vaccine as they are triggered from memory, especially after the later doses. Also, cell mediated cytokines are less expressed, which was not the case after the first or second dose. This is one more reason why third vaccination is so crucial as cytokine overexpression is sometimes called the driving force of malaria related death. Here, the characterization of cytokine or chemokine patterns produced upon vaccination can even contribute to the identification of biomarkers of vaccine response. Our literature study also supported our claims and provided us with an even broad view on genes associated with cytokine regulation in malaria infection. CXL9, 10, 11, INFP1, interleukin 12B or interleukin 6 or 10 were found to be expressed significantly in severe cases of malaria and might have other roles related to pathogenicity too. We also found the upregulated genes were associated with malaria infection. Now we will move to the next slide to summarize what we have learned so far. Three doses of malaria vaccination results in pro and anti inflammatory cytokines being expressed in a balanced way. And we have noticed that after the third, third dose, uh, cytokine expression was down regulated. Now it is crucial because we have found cytokine overexpression in case of malaria infection is associated with malaria related death and it is mostly associated with pathogenicity. So 
when this happens it results in increased protection and decreased negative effect of cytokine overexpression and it all contributes to success of malaria vaccine also we want to mention r21 vaccine as it is showing better result but it is still has a long way to go because the study took place in a smaller region and more study has to be done now you can see all the references we needed for this presentation so we have come to the end thank you everyone for listening and trying to understand how malaria vaccination helps in protection by influencing gene expression thank you again